I am so grateful that you guys are able to join us tonight. Um, Nicole McFarland is a good friend of mine. We've been friends for not a hundred years, maybe 50. <laughs> maybe yeah. 50. But yeah, because it's like half as long as I was cutting hair, to be honest. And her, I'll let, I don't want to, it's her story to tell, but she has an amazing life-changing story about why you're so passionate with DIY. And um, yes. so gracious to come on um, for our Tuesday night experience and teach us how to do DIY. But you're also going to share ingredients, label reading, all that? Sure, I can do that. I didn't know, since this was a make and take, I didn't know if we were going to want to make uh, something. We, were, we talked about making a body butter. I've got all my ingredients here. If we're going to move into that, if we don't, yeah. you don't have to. Um, wow us, girl. Show us what you got. <laughs> All right. So to, to start my story, I make DIY um, as much as I can where it makes sense. Um, Young Living has enough products for me to buy most of my things. So I do buy most of my things. But I've got, you know, I've had eczema as a child. So body butter, as an example, is one of those things that I just is non-negotiable. I have to have a body butter. I don't do lotion. So um, I DIY body butter. Um, I DIY, I don't really DIY my laundry detergent. We're going to talk about that later. I use Steve's laundry detergent, but I add some additional products to it because I work out. And so I need a little boost for, um, um, to get odors out of my, my, my clothes. I make my own lip balm. Um, and that's a fairly new thing that I started doing. So there, if, where I can do DIY, I will, um, where I can get what, where it allows me to get products cheaper if possible, but still of high quality. So the reason why I do DIY, um, for a lot of things is simply for the same reasons that you guys all probably use non-toxic products. I have, my body has just given up on synthetic preservatives. So even if you buy a natural product, except for Young Living, they're, they're, they're putting these synthetic preservatives inside their products. So when I started my journey before, prior to Young Living, I had a laundry detergent and I had a dish soap that both had a synthetic preservative in it that caused me significant issues. I had rashes and, and bumps all over my face. It moved to my cheeks, moved to my eyelids. And so once I realized, or once I discovered and had done my research, I researched it for months, once I had finally done enough research, I identified that these preservatives, while the other ingredients in the product would have otherwise been okay, these preservatives were um, pretty bad. Um, if you look at the research on them, and they're too hard to pronounce, I'll put them in the, <laughs> I'll paste them inside the, um, inside the comments for this session but you know they wreck havoc not only on me but on so many others so that is why i diy um i enjoy it except for when i can buy it because for the, if i can buy it i'm just gonna do that so like i said i brought all my ingredients to um show you how i make my um, body butter if you guys were able to purchase your ingredients beforehand then um great you can join in with me I'm gonna just walk through what those ingredients are unless I'll, I'll, I can pause for a second if there are any questions. Hey, really quick. What's the difference between body butter and lotion? Body butter is made of butter. So like it'll have shea butter, mango butter, some have cocoa butter. So it co uh, cocoa butter, cocum butter. There's a, there is a list or a laundry list of butters out there that um, contribute to making a um, body butter. The other thing that a body butter does not have that a lotion may have is a lotion may have water, which is why preservatives are required. So that is another thing. I didn't explain that earlier. My, my, my enjoyment of doing um, DIY is using oil-based products. If you, ever, if you put water in a product, it must have a preservative to prevent bacteria growth. So anyone who's making a product with water in it, they are obligated to put a preservative in it. Most companies will use 
potassium sorbate, citric acid. You know, we drink citric acid. They'll use a food grade preservative. Those preservatives aren't always strong enough to allow a product to have an extensive shelf life, which a lot of companies want. They want your product to be able to last two, three years. Well, when you're using, depending upon how much water you have in your product, um, it, would, it would determines what type of strength your preservative needs to be. So body butters have oils and butters, where lotions will have oil, could, could potentially have oils and butters as well, less of them, more water. Some make their lotions with aloe vera juice, so that's an option as well. But aloe vera, um, from my understanding, I haven't researched aloe vera thoroughly enough, but of the minimum research I've done on aloe vera, I believe that also needs a preservative as well. So that's the difference. So any I, other questions? Oh. I have a question on, on that. So you do you prefer them body butter versus the lotion because the, then you don't have a, a preservative then? Is that what you're saying? No, I've used um, body butters forever just because of my eczema. So it's just historically, I've, I mean, I used lotion when I was growing up, but I was, I had, you know, I was dealing with having eczema all the time reoccurring. Yeah. So I moved into butters later on, not the, you know, the, the ingredients at the time didn't matter. Yeah. So I've always just liked a thicker butter. Okay. Hey, yeah. Nicole. Yes. Wouldn't, would you say that um, the butters, um, when you said thicker, absolutely, but they almost put like a barrier without being greasy? Because I know yeah. I use a butter because I work outside so much, right? Which yes. you probably too, right? So it yeah. creates that kind of a barrier which where lotions don't do that. Yeah, so they stick around a little bit longer on the skin. Yeah. And it's not greasy, but they do. They stay, they stay a little bit longer. So when we talk about viscosity, of oils and butters, a butter is gonna have your thickest viscosity where an oil or anything that's loose, that's, that's I'll say loosened to a lotion, the viscosity is way different. So it's gonna absorb in your skin a lot faster than a butter will. And just like Jenna said, it, 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 all, while it's conditioning your skin, you don't feel greasy or oily. Yeah. Any other questions on that? All right, well, then I will get into how I do this. Um, I've got a bowl. I don't use my, um, some of you might do this, but I use uh, the, the, um, the utensils that I use are specific to my DIY stuff. I don't cross contaminate. Um, so I've got a, um, a bowl that's specific to my butters. I've got a um, hand blender, hand, what is this, a hand mixer, excuse me. That is specific. I only use it for my butters. I'll show you that in a second. Um, and I've got my little handy spatula to cut the butters. The butters will come in. I get unrefined uh, butter. I get unrefined everything, organic and unrefined. Some things require refinement, even though it's a low, even if it's a low temperature refinement, they have to, um, they cannot call it unrefined if it is. So as an example, I use unrefined shea butter from this company called Better Shea Butter. I took it out of the pack already, so it's not in there. And then I use, um, so unrefined shea butter is part of the ingredients. Um, I use mango butter as part of the ingredients. One thing to note is that unrefined shea butter is really earthy. So if you don't like earthy, then you're going to want to find essential oils that will cut that earthiness out of it. I use lemongrass and lavender. By the time it's done, it smells like a lemon cookie. I was shocked because when I first started doing this, I used shea, but I didn't use any essential oils in it um, at the time because I wasn't with Young Living yet. And it was, you know, it was, it was a little bit to, because I don't like the smell of earthy. I'm not earthy. I can't do earthy. So it was, it was a little bit on me, but the, the essential oils will cut it. Um, again, I use 100% pure mango butter. This, you'll notice the pack does not say unrefined. It is pure, it is organic, but the unrefined, it has to be refined to remove some of the, um, some of the, uh, um, God, I'm losing the word. It's gotta remove some of the uh, pitting and stuff that's in the butter. Um, in order to do that, they do have to heat it very low in order to get those things out. 
I then use um, coconut oil. This coconut oil I got, I used a different brand previously, but this coconut oil is from Global Goods. Um, it is cold pressed, unrefined. It is a great coconut oil. We actually have been using their um, vanilla and it is, it's fantastic. I also, so those are the, I would call these the thicker of the, those three that I just mentioned, the thicker of the ingredients. Coconut oil, as you know, when it heats up, it, it, um, the viscosity of it uh, changes slightly, um, but it is hard in cold temperatures and, um, and not hard in warmer temperatures. So that the coconut oil is necessary in order to get your butter really fluffy. Um, if you don't use coconut oil, if you're allergic to coconut oil, I have yet to find another, um, another oil that will um, keep your butter whipped. Because when we're doing this, it's gonna be whipped. It's gonna, you know, it's, it's, it's condensed when I start, but it rises, it gets, it's really nice and whipped. Um, Can I ask you yep. a real quick? You mentioned Global Goods, which you've said that before, like when we did our perfume class and you shared, yeah. cause you're, and that's why I'm thinking you're the best at teaching this because you were militant about finding the best. <laughs> Can you speak to why why global goods? Because here's me. I know there's people, because I want to be like, I'll just go get my stuff at Costco. Right. Um, I'm really I'm really good about looking at the USDA organic database. They have a database. They allow you to validate who is um, organic or who is claiming to be organic. What I like about certain companies is that they'll list all of their products. Instead, some companies will list that they're organic, they were they have an organic certification for let's say their beeswax. Mm -hmm. But then they have a whole website full of products that say it's organic, but the or the USDA organic database doesn't show all of those products. So when I I'll buy something like Sky Organics that you know I can I know that in the USDA database they've got a few things on their organic. I just go on blind faith that, you know, until I can find a better one, I'll use it because I'm trusting that since they're in the database, there's some type of scrutiny. But what I appreciate more when I, when I go and say, okay, this is the product I'm recommending. It's because I've, they've, they've actually listed that product in the USD organic database saying that this coconut oil is organic. We verified it, not just their vanilla and then nothing else. Okay. It's vanilla, coconut oil, and the 50 other products that they might offer. Awesome, thank you for that, I appreciate it. Yep, all right, and then next, the next thing that, so I know coconut oil is an oil, but this is required in the mix if you want it to be fluffy. If you don't, and you just wanna be able, you know, you just wanna kinda of dig it out, kinda of like animal, uh, I mean, the um, what's our ointment called? The animal sense. <laughs> animal sense. <laughs> You know, yeah. you can, it, it's pretty, it's thick like that. You know, if you don't put coconut oil in it, um, you can put more oils in it to loosen it up a little bit, but it doesn't get fluffy. All right. So now I'm moving on to what I call my oils. You can put as much of these oils in your mix as you want. It is really dependent upon how oily you want it to be. So I just, you know, that's why I recommend in my recipe, I just, I start, I start pouring. I think I say like use an ounce, but I just start pouring and then if I don't like it as I'm mixing it, I want it to be a little bit looser, I'll put some more of these oils in here. So one of them I use is sweet almond oil, Sky Organics. I generally use jojoba oil. Jojoba oil is most closest to our, the oil that we um, excrete from our own body. But I ran out of jojoba oil because I used it in my lip balm I just made yesterday. So I've got grapeseed. Grapeseed and a jojoba oil are um, very similar in viscosity. Grape seed is a little bit thinner than jojoba, like just by, just by a hair. It's not going to change anything. I just like to put a couple oils in there. I can just put almond oil. It's really on you. The one thing you want to do, you can just use mango. You can just use shea. You want a butter. You want to add that coconut oil to make sure it gets fluffy, and you want to carry your oil. It's pretty simple. These are just the ones that I use. And then lastly, I put in essential oils. And like I mentioned, I use lemongrass and lavender. I use 20 drops of each in this particular recipe. Um, this recipe makes thir 32 ounce. This is a 16 ounce jar. I'll fill two of these with what I'm making. So for most people who don't use butter all the time, this is a lot, right? You probably only need half of this. I've made some for my friends. Four ounces is enough. They take a little 
four ounce container and they're rocking and rolling. They're happy with what they have and it lasts them forever. For me, I can go through 32 ounces in probably, I don't know, a little, a little over a month. I use a lot. I use a lot. All right. Any questions? All right, so then I have a scale, a handy dandy scale. I just, it's just a kitchen scale. I put my bowl on it, turn the sucker on, and then I start measuring out ingredients. Um, oh, I didn't show you how the butters come, excuse me. So the butters, when, they're, when they arrive, for the most part, they'll look like a block like this. So I really don't measure. I gave you guys, I gave measurements of part of my recipe, but I, I mean, I cut this thing into fours and I call it a day. But we're gonna measure today because we're doing a class so coke um, the mango butter i am oh one other thing i want to specify this is yellow shea butter um there is a um ivory which i've used ivory but the yellow shea has a added added root and it makes it a little bit more um moisturizing than the ivory shea there's nothing wrong with, I loved Ivory Shea, I used it before, but I just said, hey, let me try it. Since I have, you know, dry skin, I wanna try it. And I did, and I like it. So I've just, kept, I've just continued to use it. So this is our mango butter. I'm just gonna plop it in the bowl. And I'm, I'm pretty sure, yeah, this is, I cut very well. This is 4.1 ounces, so four ounces, good to go. That's the end of that. Then our Shea butter. Now, sometimes you get this shea butter and it's, um, it might feel a little bit thicker, sorry, a little bit harder. Shea butter is uh, harder than mango butter, but when you get it, sometimes it actually feels softer, which I don't know the reason for that, but I've noticed that this shea butter that I just got is softer than the mango. That's the reason why I added mango was because I wanted to include a softer butter. And uh, I gotta cut a little bit more. So I'm doing four ounces of each of these. All right. And then just wipe that off. Let me put this to the side. And then now I'm gonna add my coconut oil, which is, I like to zero this out, two ounces. So, one second. I don't like to mix my butters in my containers. And I just realized that this is a different container. So now I might have to go get another utensil. Let's see if I can get this out. Not working. Oh, all right. This is going to work. So I'm just pulling two ounces of this coconut oil. It's a little softer than I expected. So my spatula, which is very bendy, is actually working, which is cool. And when you're blend, we're gonna blend this out in just a second. And you don't put your essential oils in until the end because you don't want to um, blend those oils up too bad. You just kind of want to mix them in when it's time. All right, a little bit more. Does anybody have questions while I'm digging this stuff out of here? Of course. Do you use this on your face too, under your makeup? Or before? No, makeup? I don't. I don't put this butter on before. I use a, I use um, rosehip seed oil and red raspberry seed oil, a 50-50 mix on my face before bed. Right, wait, here's me. Hold up. Rose hip seed. Yeah. I use red raspberry. I'm like, I have not heard of rose. I've heard of like putting like I will brew rose hip tea and wash my face. But tell me about this goodness and why do you use it? Red uh, the rose hips rose hips rose hip seed 
is um you gotta look that one up that one's a really good oil I, that one has a lot of uh god i want to remember all the vitamins in it it's like vitamin a k e x y z i use the red raspberry because um i know you use that one but i use it because one i use it in the morning after i wash my face and it's a good um sorry that took so long guys because that <laughs> i should have had my spoon i didn't have it um i use that one because of the sunblock mm -hmm. it's a spf yeah but the, the the rose hip seed oil has just a boatload of vitamins in it okay and so i prefer that one over the ones where i can just get a or b or e you know what i mean yeah this is i'm looking it up because you just told me to and i have a computer right here <laughs> and i'm like holy crap i've been just using vitamin e yeah see i don't want just i want like one that has and i know vitamin e has other um properties to it yeah. but i want one that's got you know I, if it's got if it can be like all encompassing then i'm gonna use that i'm just gonna buy one of those and just Listen, use that you guys need to look this up because that's just Forget CBD oil. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> All right. All right. Gonna... So, like I Were said, I don't. Rose hip seed, and what was the other one? Uh, red raspberry red ra seed oil. Yeah. And I get organic. There's red raspberry. There's a guy on Amazon, and I can post this in the, on the, in the, um, in the um, chat, but there's a guy who makes i get the organic um the organic wasn't easy to find initially but he's finally started producing it this is all he makes is red, red raspberry seed oil he makes a traditional or conventional and he makes an organic and i can post those in the in the in the site um and then i use organic red uh rose hip seed oil 50 50 blend i do have both of those so this is what your ingredients look like oh okay just to tell you guys too, just to add on to what she's saying, red raspberry seed oil is a great, it's got what, like 40 SPF in it? 50, 50. 50. Okay, so it's pretty yes. high. If you're making your own sunscreen and, you know, if you happen to have a kid who had melanoma, you might want to have that or you don't want to get so, the melanoma. <laughs> so here's a story about red raspberry and it's because it's rose hip and red raspberry. So you have to correct me if I mess this up. Anyway, <laughs> the red raspberry seed oil is, I've only, I've used that exclusively and I, I shouldn't say that, but I have used it exclusively as a sunblock. I work, I, I live on 15 acres. We work outside all the time. So we're constantly working. I'm constantly being, you know, I'm constantly in the sun. My husband is white. So he's always in the sun right on his thing. And he comes in here and he's all red and he's just jacked up. And I'm like, dude, I told you, use this oil. He's like, well, you didn't put it on me. So we tested it. I'm like, I realized that I've got a lot of melon and I'm dark. So you, I might not show that I've tanned as easy as he will show that he's tanned or burned or red. So I tested it. One day he didn't put it on. And um, the next weekend or a few weekends later when he mowed again, I put it on him and he had no issues. It was high summer. So it's high heat out here, high sun. We've gone to Wyoming where it was really abnormally hot in Wyoming last year. And you're closer, closer to the sun, obviously, because of the elevation. And he just got jacked up until I started putting this red raspberry seed oil on him. I was putting it on every day. He got so badly burned. But I, like I said, we started slathering it on him after like day two. And it just, I mean, it, it, I didn't get burned at all. I didn't have any, I might have gotten a slight tan, but that stuff is magic. I'm telling you, yeah. I love that stuff. Because I have zinc oxide in my, as part, I was going to make some sunscreen. But this stuff has been working on its own, so I haven't made any yet. All right, long story. Apologize. Thank you. Thank These are you. My, yep, absolutely. These are my butters and coconut oil. I'm gonna, like I said, I said one out. I just start. I just add. I pretty much just wing this one because I mean you can use an ounce, but I would always, if you don't like it, then um, kind of like, you know, if you're a chef, you just start. It's an ounce, but it's really a cup, you know? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you're like, that is not an ounce. <laughs> so, right? 
So I'll put more in here. Now, I will say this is going to get loud. So I'm not sure how you want to do this or if you're okay with it being loud because you got to blend this stuff for a while. You let me know how you want to do this. I did show you how to put it all in there. So you want but me I to know see you while you're doing that and then... I can, and maybe you guys have some other stuff you want to chat about, and then um, I could just kind of give you guys a peek at how it's looking, yeah. or maybe I wish I had a better, like, setup. I don't have, like, a tripod and all that, because I would love to show you what it looks like. In fact, I probably can, because I only need one hand for this. So let me plug this in, and then I'll grab my phone and kind of show you guys what it's looking like inside the bowl. Okay. That works. Do you okay. want to go ahead and mute you, because you said it'll be loud? Yeah, you can mute me. Okay. So do you guys have any questions on other DIY stuff? I don't, did you all catch her video um, she did yesterday on like making a lip balm? That was, that was good. Um, while she's, she won't be able to hear, but I want to share it to Weird Oily because she talked about uh, mixing that. And, you know, I love that she said if she can buy it, she usually rather do that. But the lip balm was so easy. It literally took her five minutes to do the whole thing. Have you guys ever made your own lip balm? I mean, she made, um, so she didn't use beeswax and she said it wasn't because she was vegan, but she said, cause it makes her lips like more peely. Have you guys had that? It may have, it's right. So she used something else. I'll ask her what it was. Um, so maybe she can post those recipes. The other thing I wanted to share with you guys, hang on, I wanted to have these out. Please hold, oh dear. Actually, I'm out of it. <laughs> Have you guys used Melissa Pepping's Chemical Free Home Books by any chance? She has a ton of DIY stuff in there. Um, I'm thinking about Jennifer looking at your, oh, you want me to type it in? Come on. What is it called, Trish? Chemical Free? Is it Chemical Free Living or Chemical Free Home? Oh, shoot. I just privately did that too, Jen. Sorry. Um, <laughs> It's Melissa Peppings. I want to say, yeah, she's got, so she's got three. And I wanted you guys to, you know what I'll do is, well, when Nicole comes back, I'll look it up on, and I'll put the link in there. But she's got three. So she's got one for babies. So babies and children, which is great. She's got one, yeah, volume one through, one, two, and three. Thank you, Maribel. Um, the first one is basically like going DIY, you know, chemical free in your whole house, all the DIY. And the second one, is more personal care products, right? Am I making sure I don't get that flipped? But it's cool because she'll do everything from, like if you're pregnant or if you guys know anybody who's pregnant who wants to put oils on their belly to keep from the stretch marks or um, pre-birth, after birth, all that kind of care, umbilical cord care, like every single detail of personal care that you can think of. Then there's, um, using a soft scrub in the house. There's mopping your floors and all these kinds of things. You know, using the Thieves Household Cleaner, it's brilliant. I mean, it's really a fantastic find. And I want to say, hang on. You know, I'm just going to go ahead and look while she's doing that. <laughs> well, I can see my Amazon. I they don't look like they're showing new versions. Say that again, Jen. They're on Amazon, um, but they don't look like they're new version so it's like not available not available oh okay not here available. The post, um i have post. the website jen do you have it can you post? Oh, okay go direct are you on the shop site there yes. trish yes okay yes, I am. I'll go there yeah so yeah she has um chemical free home for face and body Mm -hmm. and then for housekeeping and then for baby and mommy right and so you know i'm just gonna i have it right here so the thing is is that obviously like all things it's less expensive if you buy more so one book is ten dollars five books is 40. so if we had enough people who wanted to do that i could purchase those and then get them out to you guys um, it would be, you know, it would lessen the cost a little bit, or if you guys just want to order your own, that's fine too. But if you know people, 
Um, in fact, just now I'm thinking, note to self, I know a couple gals who are pregnant, so that would be a really sweet, that with some Thebes, um, you know, cleaner, or maybe some a seedlings wipe or whatever. Oh, that was the other thing. In the baby, she has a whole recipe for baby wipes, which I use are seedlings to take off my makeup, but it's, you know, maybe not everybody wants to spend that and they want to make their own. And it's kind of fun to make your own and put your own oils to it. Not even a, a cost thing, but really just having your own scent, which is super, super lovely. So, yeah. Okay, do you guys, are you seeing that, what she's doing there, that mixing? So I thought it was fun, and I was going to say to her that how she doesn't cross-contaminate. That's not my wheelhouse. I'm like, I don't know. I just made some vegan cheese sauce. I'm going to wash that out, and then I'm going to make my butter. Maybe I should, right? Do you do that too, Jen? You're like, anybody else? I would do that. I wouldn't have separate. I, would. I mean, it depends on, on how, I guess it would depend on what it was. But I'm wondering if, you know, because she like, she said she had such bad eczema and I think if you're trying to really fix a problem that you wouldn't want to have anything in it, anything cross contaminated. Cause I don't know if you guys ever made something and it goes moldy in your shower or whatever. Nicole, we were just talking about how so, you yeah. cross contaminate. Yeah, I know I could hear you. It wasn't as loud as I thought it was going to be. The reason why I don't cross contaminate is bacteria. So, um, just like I was saying that, you know, with lotions and when think water is added to, um, water is added to a product, it needs a preservative because I'm not using preservatives. I just want to minimize the chance of bacteria. Now, granted, it probably takes bacteria a couple weeks to grow or, or well, a couple weeks. So like in the example of that foaming hand soap that I make. Jen, that if I don't put the thieves cleaner in it in two weeks, it has strains of um, bacteria growing in it. I have a picture I can share. I haven't shared that picture. I only shared it with you, Jen. But yeah, I, I made one with the thieves cleaner in it. It's just like a half a cap and one without. And I let them sit for two weeks because I had been experiencing when I used the Dr. Bronner's in just water that after two weeks, um, it would get real cloudy. So I tested it just Bronner's with water, Bronner's with water and half cap thieves. And in just, I mean, it's like overnight, the next day you wake up, the strains of bacteria are just in there. So um, that's why I don't cross contaminate. That's why I started. That's why, you know, I didn't cross contaminate. I don't think that um, when you're making oils or DIY, if you're using a stuff in a week or two weeks or whatever, that it would cause any issues. I don't necessarily have any other example other than the Bronner's where I had a bacterial growth and anything else I've made. But again, like I said, I just, I don't use kitchen stuff on uh, that DIY. Yeah. The um, one thing about um, the, I want to say this is the, um, the healthy home, the Melissa Pepping book. I do have that. You sent me one. Yeah. And um, there is a laundry detergent um, recipe in there. I do not recommend you use the bluing agent in that recipe. Okay. That stuff had me itching for, like, I had to wash all my clothes. And I know it was that. Oh. <laughs> and it was the only new thing I used. So just be careful of that. That website boasts that it's all natural. It's been, they've been using it since the 1800s. Just something in it. I called them and said, hey, what's your biocide? Biocide is a, um, is a preservative. And so they say, you know, on their website, they've got all kinds of information on there. They've got their MSDS on there. Like, you can clearly see that it's, you know, that the ingredients in there are good, but unfortunately, synthetic preservatives are also good. Um, so, it, you know, they're, they're not necessarily considered sinister. So when I called them and asked them what their bio side was, they said it was all natural, um, but they couldn't find the actual name of it. And I should have known at that point, not that they're, I don't think that they're uh, making false claims to their customers. It's just something that I'm allergic to. So just be cautious of it if you end up using it. Can I, can I ask, Nicole, you um, said you use some laundry detergent to help with odor. I said, oh, yeah, the laundry detergent. Okay, so I'm going to put this to the side. This isn't done yet. I blend this. I just sit here and blend this until this thing, like, rises to the top. I won't do that while we're here, but I wanted to show you how it fluffs up. And uh, it'll get fluffier than this. I'll finish this after we're done here. Um, so I'm going to set that to the side. The laundry detergent. You asked about, correct? I'm going to laundry detergent. I use 
Oops. You didn't put the oils in yet, right? Into your butter? No, I have not put the oils in. So when I, okay, so I'll finish that. Sorry. So no, you're fine. So I'll blend that until I'm satisfied. I do not uh, put the oils in until after I'm satisfied with the, um, with the uh, quality of the whip. Meat quality meaning we use butters and those butters are fairly hard. I like to get as many of the chunks out as possible. Now, there are some people who make body butters who double boil their butters. They melt their butters down. Then they put them in the refrigerator to cool them off a little bit. Then they come back and blend them. So that means you'll have no lumps in your blend. I don't do that because I just don't want to heat up my butters. I don't want to lose any nutrients in the butter, even by accident or by chance. Maybe I heated it up too fast. That's the same thing I was talking about with refined mango butter you can only heat these products up these butters up or oils up to a certain temperature before you just kill all the good stuff in it i don't know what that temperature is and i don't want so i i just i just stay away from it i like the heal i like the um i like the benefits that the butter gives and i don't want to lose that because i accidentally you know um, made it too hot while trying to melt it down so i blend i might sit here 15 minutes or 10 minutes blending 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 until the the um until the chunks in it are very small where you can't even see them even if you did once you rub your hands together they melt fast so it's not a big deal either way but i blend until i get those chunks out and then i put the oils in there and i just you know i run that i run it probably 30 60 seconds to make sure it's all incorporated and then i'm done i start to i start to bottle it so um the laundry detergent let me see what this recipe is so i got this recipe online and it is made this is a gallon container i think people have seen this before it's where people make home brews and stuff like that um i love this jar i use a quarter cup thieves laundry soap a quarter cup washing soda a quarter cup baking soda. Now, the purpose of baking soda or the purpose of washing soda is to make your hard water softer. That's the purpose of washing soda. And then the baking soda helps eliminate um, helps eliminate odor. So the baking soda and washing soda can do the, can do that as well. Both baking and washing soda can do the same thing, or from an odor perspective. So I work out. I like to you know ensure that I can get those those odors out of my fabrics with the baking and washing soda. So quarter cup washing, quarter cup baking, and a quarter cup thieves laundry soap, two tablespoons of thieves cleaner, which is essentially an ounce, and then I put. Uh, four drops lemon essential oil and four drops thieves essential oil. Sometimes I go over that. It's not, it's whatever. Um, but I will say in order to make this recipe, you do have to put some warm water in the base of this first to, um, to incorporate your washing soda and your baking soda. You want to make sure that it, this just looks like water um, when you put those two ingredients in there. So put the hot water in there first, baking, washing, let that all dissolve then put your laundry soap in there, then put your, um, you can put your um, drops of essential oil in there. Then the rest of this is just water, clean water. And I've used this now for quite some time, for a few months. I made one like this and I put that bluing agent in it. And um, so I had to give it to my mom because she's all toxic over there. She doesn't care. So when it started making me itch, I was like, hey, I got this whole gallon of laundry soap and I know you're on a limited income. So not it. that I'm, because some of it's just an allergy, right? Some of it I just can't use. I don't, you know, it's not that the, that the bluing agent is necessarily toxic. It's just, I'm allergic to it, clearly. Something in it I'm allergic to. So I gave it to her. She uses that and she told my aunt that she loves it, but don't tell me. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> Yeah, because she doesn't want to. She doesn't want to go non-toxic. She's like, no, I'm not doing that. I don't know no, what I'd you're like doing. Better than my tide. <laughs> exactly. Hey, Nicole, right. in the laundry soap. Um, because I'm glad to talk to you face to face about this. So you were commenting that laundry soap thread, man, that got to be so good. Now I'm gonna go buy new, no, new pans and 
right? All clean. <laughs> that was a great thread. That was good. <laughs> so this, you would use like your, so to that, you would just add then the washing soda baking. So that's only different. Is that it? Yeah. To your, oh, I'm sorry. Say that, ask that question again. So comparatively, like the one that I posted from my friend, um, you would just add it's is it oh yeah it could be the same yeah you can absolutely i don't know because it's 32 ounces how much washing or baking soda you would add okay. i was surprised that a quarter cup in this gallon worked because when before i was using thieves laundry soap by itself and then i was putting a cup of baking soda in like a gallon size uh, water container shaking it up to dissolve it, and then putting that all on my clothes so meaning I was using a whole cup per load wow. back then before I made this blend. And now that I have this blend, I, it's much less in there. But the my laundry is, because um, remember I was having kind of an issue too with the Thieves laundry soap getting my husband, he was wearing toxic deodorant. He just now transitioned to non-toxic, but he was using toxic. And I was having a hard time getting that deodorant out of his shirt. And um, with just Thieves and this, um, is is working really well okay and that jug so, is what, like 64 ounces this jug is a gallon so that's um i don't i can't even i don't know what how many ounces is a gallon i'm like isn't that 64 <laughs> no it's a, 128 120 okay uh, oh 64 is half a gallon twice that yeah, yeah. that's right all right okay. yo 128 perfect Wait, Nicole, Thanks for was so Nicole, Christy's asking, do you use tap water or distilled in that? I want to, I, I couldn't remember. That's why I didn't say, but I'm like 100% distilled in everything. So I'm pretty sure I use distilled. Okay. Don't quote me because in my mind, I was thinking, well, first of all, I have the literal worst water here. I have an RO system. So it was either my RO water, which is like, like my city, my, I have well water. My well water has like a thousand parts per million in it, which means it's like never drink it or you're going to die. And then my RO water is like 19 parts per million. So it's almost distilled. Distilled is zero to one parts per million in the water. So I'm using either distilled or I'm using a really clean reverse osmosis water. Okay. Good to know. Thank so, you. So, yeah. Okay. Yep. Is your heating? I'm sorry. Does that help? You, you said you, you're heating it. Does that help with getting it mixed? Mine's separate. Yes. Crazy. But you're, my, are you using that my, recipe? I use um, a similar one with these. I use a similar one with these where I distill it and I use, I don't put the baking, so, well, the baking soda I put in separate. Um, but I was just using cold distilled water. Warm. You want warm in order to, to um, get, like I put some on the stove and I just let, I don't let it boil, but I let it, I can see the heat coming off of it. And so when I use, uh -huh. when I do that, it, um, it dissolves the uh, sodas. The easily. sodas in the soap without foaming up really high. Cause even your foam on that's not that high. Yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. That's not bad at all. No, no, yeah, that's good. And um, yeah, it doesn't separate. Now it might separate a little bit at the bottom, just a little. It's not a lot, but every time I take it out, I do this. It's not a huge, yeah. like I don't have major separation in this. I've actually not noticed separation. I think I just shake it because I think, well, I just blended a bunch of stuff that I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> do they agree? I know they agree in the washer, but I don't know if they agree in the bottle. So I just shake it. And tell me again, how many drops of oil you put in that big gallon? I just put four of each. You can put more, but you know, I personally don't think it needs the oils. I just put them in there because I know lemon will help. You know, I like the lemon in there to help it. You know, maybe it'll keep my colors bright. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, I know it's a phenomenal oil on its own, but I don't know, you know, after in a washer with all those clothes and all that water, you know, how much four drops in a gallon is actually doing. Well, and to be fair, you know, the, I think, DIY and I'm sure you would agree it, it's a mindset shift so yes white clothes you know way back in the day my grandma and her grandma didn't have pure white clothes it just wasn't a thing yep 
So now we're like, oh, it has to be sparkling white. And I don't even wear white. I'm like, and that's the thing about detergents too with the optical brighteners. I've noticed like no difference in my clothes because I no longer use toxic laundry soap. Right. Like what are the optic brighteners actually doing? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what you're doing because you're, my clothes look the same. White, I don't wear white. I know my husband does and he's like, I need a bleach. Well, you better take him over to Wanda's house because she's still using bleach over there, but we ain't using bleach over here. <laughs> So she's using your laundry soap. Yeah, yeah. So now the, I mean, but it's been doing great. This blend of laundry soap so has been doing fantastic. Um, I just am curious since he switched his deodorant. How are his oh. shoes now? Um, well, he still has all his old ones, so um, they're you know they're pretty. We're buying, like, we're starting to replace his shirts because of all that damage. I, I just, you know, it just started happening, too. I mean, he's always worn this deodorant, but they changed the formula or something, and it just started really messing up his shirts, and we just, we couldn't figure it out. I wasn't necessarily, I was trying to encourage him to go non, you know, go um, natural with his deodorant, um, and he just wasn't into it. He really wanted to wait for colder weather because, you know, he's at work, and he gets, you know, they get all worked up there. So, you know, soon his winter hit he was on it but he still has those shirts um this this um the deodorant he's using right now is not impacting his newer shirts but his old ones are still i mean you can only get so much of that stuff out of there now they're just stained i think i would call it stained yeah that makes sense yeah i'm trying so to we're think busy replacing the questions them. that i have I'm like i have you here what else do i need to ask you <laughs> <laughs> i have one. Uh, okay. Jen, do you have something Did yeah, did you say you have a dishwasher detergent? So I have super sensitive skin and my husband had cancer and my kid has super sensitive skin. So we do yeah. a lot of, like we do a lot of organic, everything has to be sensitive skin. Like I do Korean, I get stuff from overseas just because there's nothing in it. So like deter yeah. dishwasher detergent's been my hard one because the only thing that cleans it, you have to like scrub your hands after you put it in the dishwasher. I don't. Yeah, I, I use, I do use the, um, here's the trick. So I use the thieves washing dishwasher powder. I know some people don't like it. Some people have said that it leaves spots all over and not just spots. Cause I mean, spots are probably expected, but it leaves like, I mean, it film that does not happen to me. I though, um, have very soft water. I also, when I put the detergent in there, when I, I put, I put water in it. So I put water, detergent and water, because when I was using just the powder, it was kind of getting stuck in there. It wasn't, I don't think it was really dispersing. So I tried less, it was doing the same thing. So I started putting water in that little cup dispenser where I put the powder, not overflowing it, but just a little bit of water in there to get it like, you know, working. And I haven't had any issues. I know some people that use Thieves Cleaner. I'm kind of surprised about that. I know Thieves Cleaner is the best. But you know, when you think dishwasher and you're putting a cleaner in there, you're like, how is it getting around? How is it doing its thing? But that's a mindset thing. So some people have used um, Thieves Cleaner. I think, I don't want to, I think it's Thieves Cleaner, not the laundry soap. Like I have to go back and research that, but I believe it's Thieves Cleaner. Yeah. I've done that. So Thieves Cleaner is an option. I love what you said about when you go, because it's like, that's one of the things I have on my mind to post something about, because my question for people are, when you put your laundry in, do you have to, do you wash your hands after you're done? Well, I know they're sneaky clothes, so you might wash them. But I'm washing my hands because I just touched that laundry detergent. When I'm cleaning, when I'm putting dishes in the, and when I'm putting my dishwasher powder in the dishwasher, do you wash your hands after that? If you do, you shouldn't have to. You can, because it's just a natural thing. Sure. But I love the fact that I can put dishwasher powder in, put laundry detergent in, I can clean my counters with a clean towel and know that if I didn't wash my hands, I'm not, something, something bad isn't going to happen to me. Yeah. So I love that you said that. That's, yeah, that's so funny. You're right. It's a mindset thing. So I'm thinking, well, I do wash my hands, <laughs> but I'm like, I don't need to. Right. <laughs> it was just something I thought about. Cause I'm like, well, I really don't have to, but I mean, we just do it because it's natural to do something like that. Which is funny because if you're using toxic cleaner and you go wash your hands with toxic stuff, it's like, <laughs> so it's like, what's the point? Yep. <laughs> don't do that. Exactly. Don't do that. <laughs> Does anybody else have any questions for Nicole? 
I did. How much of the laundry soap does she use in her load? Great question. So it was originally recommended to use a quarter of a, let me not say that. Hold on, let me look. Where's my little recipe? I use more than this. I just, I'm going back to, yeah, I was recommended to use a quarter cup for a load. I use more than that. So I kind of measured out a quarter cup. I'm like, is this enough? And I'm like, no. So I have a little dispenser where you put your liquid laundry detergent and a quarter cup for me. And I know everybody's washer is different. was like just above the words, right? So it wasn't max fill. It was like, it filled up the tray and there's like these words there that say, you know, how much you should fill. And I go past that. So I want to say I'm probably using, I don't know, that's a quarter cup. I'm, pro I'm not using a half cup, I'm pro probably using, um, what's a, is it three quarters? A third. A third, thank you. Yeah, a third. Okay. I was trying to do math. My husband's standing right here. He's a numbers guy. So I'm like, is that, a, what is that? Is that a three third? <laughs> a third of a cup. I love that because I have just made, I know all of our thieves stuff is so concentrated. Um, mm -hmm. That's the one thing I've tried to get across to people is like, get the thieves soap, the foaming soap, but then you take the refill and then you put like quarter to a third of the bottle in and then fill the rest with water. You don't have to fill the bottle. Yeah. The laundry soap I've used is just a tiny, tiny little bit of it because it works. But what I love is that you and then my friend Rose have broken it down to where Oh my gosh, that Thieves Laundry Soap, it makes it so inexpensive. $7 yeah. for the 32 ounces. That's amazing. I think the hardest part with the laundry soap is that people get it and the bottle is small. Right. And then the cap is small. And there's these numbers on there, one, two, three. And that one is at like the, a quarter of that cup. Yeah. And nobody can really fathom that. In fact, it's like, did it even come out? You're like pouring it. You're like right. wanting to scrape it out of there. So that's why people are DIYing it, right? Because they're just like, it, our, our minds can't shift to less. Yeah. And, you know, this makes it easier to have it in a blend like this because then, you know, I don't have a, I, I do have water in my mudroom, but this is already diluted and like I can, so now I can just pour. I can't over pour it. I can't really under pour it. You know, I just pour it in there and I just go. I don't have to really think about, you know, pouring it out and then, oh man, I did a whole cap by accident and, you know, figuring all that out. Yeah. That's why I like the, the, this particular blend. Well, and I like the pump too, because I have children who do laundry and so mm -hmm. and they try, but I love to be able to say, okay, it's two pumps. That's, and mine, own, they should be here tomorrow. Yes. Yeah, but that's so I think that's great. Yeah. Yep. I think that's great. In fact, I don't like actually lugging that I honestly don't like lugging this around what I don't have though is an empty bottle I want to use a thieves detergent bottle that's I gave it to my mom because it had that other blend in there but on you know if I didn't have the, the pump was just fantastic when I saw that I'm like ah what a genius right. idea yeah. um but I would I would generally not say lug that glass thing around that just would be where I store it and then I pour some in an empty laundry soap bottle and just kind of and use that it's much lighter um and, and a lot easier to maneuver but like i said that pump is i'm like can i get that and how i wonder how many pumps this is good you know this would take yeah. i don't know i know i'd be curious to see so that's cool. yeah um, yep. if you don't mind in the event just posting the recipe for this the recipe for your laundry mm -hmm. soap and then yep. I, I don't know if you heard me but i would love to share you're uh, just watching you do the lip balm. What I loved about it is you oh, made yeah. it so simple. I mean, it was literally five minutes and 22 seconds. That's what the video was. <laughs> yeah, you got to get all your ingredients together. And then once you become good at it, it doesn't take long at all. I mean, there's people who do it in less time. That was a little bit longer because it was, yeah, I hadn't done it as frequently as others have. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great because um, up here, my children get that like dry, that red. I don't know if you guys ever get that, but just red. And so they've been using rose ointment. I'm like, um, could you guys stop using the <laughs> rose ointment? Because then my daughter comes in and it's like all oh, crud. That's probably $5. Like, yeah. It's on your face. Just saying. You're like, go find the animal scent. <laughs> and they're both right here. But no, they're, they're like, mom, I like the rose. I'm like, yeah, I bet you do. Yeah, I bet you do. Some rich kids. I mean, they're the ones acting rich. <laughs> oh, word. Those children. 
All right, anybody else got anything for Nicole? I am so grateful that you are willing to come on and share your wisdom. This is so helpful. Absolutely, so, absolutely. Yeah, I'm about to go make some lotion now. This is great, or some butter rather. Now I know the difference between body butter and lotion. <laughs> yeah, no. It's great, right? right? Thank you for sharing. Absolutely, no problem. Happy to come back any other time.